welcome to ATCM the emergency medicine channel uh, today we will be discussing a very uh, important emergency case that was presented to our ER a 23 year old uh, staff nurse uh, was brought from a ward in our hospital with a history of uh, itching following some food intake uh, so uh, in, uh, she was immediately taken to our, uh, our red area because of uh, suspected uh, allergic reaction so, uh, initial 10 second assessment patient was conscious oriented uh, and uh, she was speaking re uh, relevantly in full sentences. There was no uh, evidence of any respiratory distress. So, we went uh, uh, immediately to the primary survey. Her airway was patent. There was no uh, signs of any airway obstruction uh, like uh, any uh, pooling of secretion, any hoarseness of voice, a strider and there was no uh, also no uh, lip edema and uh, no uh, airway uh, obstruction features were there. So, we went to the uh, breathing part. Uh, the patient uh, was maintaining... Any voice change that they have said? No, no, no. There was so, no obvious uh, voice change. That is again also. one of the common thing that they can see is the hoarseness, hoarseness of, voice. of voice. Sudden change in the uh, pattern of voice. Uh, so, we went to breathing. Breathing, the patient was maintaining a saturation of 96% is in room air and the patient had a bi uh, air and was bilaterally equal and bilateral uh, V's was present in the posterior uh, aspect and uh, the patient's respiratory was uh, rate was around uh, 20 to 22 per minute. Uh, then, uh, yeah, like she was started uh, like on uh, we have arranged for a uh, supplemental oxygen right now it was 96 percentage we have arranged for supplemental oxygen uh, by face mask uh, and uh, by the time we uh, assess the uh, circulation part uh, also parallelly so patient uh, pulse rate was 90 per minute it was uh, regular in rhythm and uh, patient had a uh, blood pressure of 100 by 80 millimeters of mercury uh, and uh, like at this point we had uh, secured two large bore iv cannula uh, we went to the uh, disability part. Disability part, a patient had a uh, G full GCS of 15 on 15 and uh, the patient uh, like uh, was speaking relevantly. So, uh, we went to exposure. In exposure part, uh, we could see uh, obvious articular lesions over her face and uh, hand and a patient was ephebrite. Uh, so, uh, at this point, uh, we know that it uh, it is uh, anaphylaxis because uh, the patient has uh, articaria along with that she has some uh, features of respiratory distress, bilateral wheeze is there and uh, the saturation 96 percent is currently. Uh, so, uh, we had started her on uh, auto, supplemental auto by face mask and uh, the drug of choice for uh, anaphylaxis uh, is adrenaline. Okay. So, uh, like already we had secured two large bore IV cannulas as well. So, in this patient we had uh, gone for adrenaline 1 in uh, 1000 strength point uh, of, uh, 3 ml IM dose was given. Uh, so, IM should be given preferably in the uh, thigh or uh, if not in the deltoid region. So, for her we had given uh, 0.3 ml 1 in 1000 uh, IM dose was given okay. and uh, she was also connected to continuous cardiac monitoring and along with that we had uh, given her uh, injection hydrocortisone 200 mg uh, IV was given and also uh, we had given injection available that is chlorofenramin malate uh, 50 mm -hmm. mg slow IV was also given mm -hmm. and uh, we had uh, continuously uh, reassessed her so uh, on reassessment uh, she was her airway uh, was uh, patent there was no signs of airway compromise her uh, like a uh, respiratory distress was coming down wheeze was improving and uh, circulation she was still maintaining her blood pressure of uh, around uh, 100 by 80 and uh, there was no tachycardia or no dyserythmia following the uh, administration. administration of adrenaline mm -hmm. disability her gcs was uh, remaining 15 Same. on 15 okay. uh, and uh, her itching was coming down uh, so, we went to the uh, sample history and the secondary okay. uh, survey. Uh, meanwhile, we will just see uh, why you said this is an anaphylaxis. What are the points in favor of an anaphylaxis than just an allergic reaction? Uh, so, if it is when an... When you will call anaphylaxis. If so, there definition is an, wise. Uh, if it is an articarial... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Anaphylaxis is like... Uh, the any urticaria or any lip edema or allergic reaction in, with the systemic involvement. So, it can uh, ideally like two systems should be like involved. Uh, so, it can be respiratory system involvement where we can get bronchospasm uh, like uh, desaturation uh, or 
and uh, distress or it can be involvement of the uh, gastrointestinal system where it can be a nausea diarrhea vomiting uh, or it upper can, airway uh, it, uh, it can be laryngeal edema leading to stridor hoarseness of voice uh, uh, like lip edema tongue edema and all uh, causing any airway compromise then it can be uh, uh, cardiovascular collapse so the patient can go into syncope uh, hypotension bradycardia all these things so any two of these uh, we can call it as an anaphylaxis. anaphylaxis otherwise it will be a simple allergic, allergic reaction. reaction only maybe only you have single manifestation of an arctic area Arctic. you can just call it as an arctic area lesion Please. we need not manage like an anaphylaxis but those group of patient can go into the anaphylaxis. anaphylaxis so that is the uh, you need to have a clear cut denialization so many people doesn't know what is an anaphylaxis what is exactly an anaphylaxis and an arctic okay. area so both uh, need to be managed a little bit differently that's only thing okay so the uh, key thing is uh, the drug of choice for anaphylaxis is always adrenaline and the proper administration of adrenaline so system involvement when you see either of the cardiovascular system or a respiratory system involvement upper airway or a lower airway involvement uh, you need to definitely consider it as an anaphylaxis or as you said yeah. gi so that is again one of the commonest thing they might come just with any no other uh, manifestation maybe after ingestion of some food they are just coming with an episode of acute gastroenteritis sort of a picture so we can have a sort of an anaphylaxis also it can be an anaphylaxis to the food item whatever they are consumed so that part also we need to take into consideration so uh, now uh, the question asked is uh, if uh, you said regarding adrenaline, so can you just specify the dosing of adrenaline in anaphylaxis and if there is anaphylactic shock, how will you give adrenaline? So again, if you give IM, the absorption will be low. So when you have an anaphylactic shock, how will you manage? When you have anaphylaxis, how will you give adrenaline? We can just elaborate. So anaphylaxis, we can give IM adrenaline. Mm. But if the patient is in anaphylactic shock, that is cardiovascular co uh, compromise, we'll have to go for IV administration of adrenaline. Mm. So IV adrenaline, the dosage is like we have to dilute it. We should not give the 1 in 1000 dilution adrenaline. It should be 1 in 10,000 dilution. So we can take 1 ampule of 1 mg adrenaline, dilute it in 10 ml, uh, 9 ml of NS. So the total will be 10 ml. So 1 mg will be the 10 ml uh, solution. And from that, we can can give 1 ml as a slow IV or 5 to 10 minutes or otherwise we can go for an infusion protocol uh, maybe we can take 4 ampules of uh, adrenaline uh, dilute it to 50 ml that is 46 ml NS with 4 ml adrenaline and this solution uh, can be given as a IV infusion so uh, for a 60 kg adult uh, around uh, like 4 ml per hour will be equivalent to 0 0.01 microgram per kg Kilogram per, per hour, hour infusion, infusion. So that is one key thing that we need to remember that uh, the common mistake what we can what the maybe a junior doctor or a junior nurse who is taking care they can just take the whole direction and give it as an IV just like what we do in cardiac arrest. So that part we should be very clear and uh, what as you said take 1 ml that is available 1 ampule is 1 ml, ml of 1 mg 1 in 1000 okay. dilution and you dilute into 9 ml of normal saline so it will become 10, 10 ml so each ml will be 0.1 mg from that you take 1 ml and you dilute it further if you need it or you can give it as a slow infusion over 5 minutes so that is one protocol or otherwise the safest protocol will be the next one that is to give us a continuous infusion by taking 4 uh, vials but it will take some time so uh, once the patient is in anaphylactic shock you just go ahead with the routine uh, large bore IV access and IV fluids just like how we manage any of the shock, hypotension yeah. shock you just start with 1 liter of uh, fluid yeah. bolus or so 20 to 30 ml per kg of fluid bolus and then uh, you proceed and if like uh, if at all patient uh, is like having severe tachycardia any disorder may even other vasopressors like noradrenaline uh, can also be like uh, attempted if adrenaline patient is having severe severe uh, tachycardia, tachycardia because it has got significant beta on effect it can increase the heart rate also so already if the patient is having an elderly female underlying a significant coronary artery disease with adrenaline they can have a worsening of uh, angina. angina so that is one possibility so in that situation you can switch over to noradrenaline adrenaline also uh, but the initial effect of will be the maximum will be with adrenaline, adrenaline. only so the drug of choice as you said it is adrenaline so the same thing uh, how will you give in pediatric uh, age group uh, so, uh, pediatric age group, uh, again, like the IM dosage will be uh, 1 in 1000 dilution. For age group from 6 to 12 years, it will be 0. 0.5 ml. Age group Point, of... 0. 0.3. 0. It will be 0. 0.3. Adult, it will be 0. 0.5. More than 12 years, 0. 0.5. 0. 6 to 12 years, 0. 0.3. Yes. Less than 6 years, it will be 0. 0.15. Yes. Uh, so, uh, that uh, again, 1 in 10,000 dilution of uh, IM dose. And uh, again... 1 in... 
same adult preparation 0.5 will give to adult 0.3 to 6 to 12 year age and 0.15 less than 6 years uh, then uh, other thing is infusion will again be uh, similar depending upon the weight, weight of the child weight based will be there uh, again then uh, uh, this is the uh, like drug of choice other thing is the hydrocortisone steroids so steroids basically uh, it is to prevent the further uh, uh, episodes so you have to remember that only the action is going to happen after 3 to 4 hours there is no immediate action with steroids, steroids. so we, whether you give orally or whether you give IV, IV. it has got same bioavailability so, whether you want to give IV, uh, fine. If you have an IV access, go ahead. But if in a child, if the child is not able to uh, get an IV line, you can give oral also. Maybe at that time, we need to think of dexamethasone. dexamethasone. So, more commonly, dexamethasone syrups are available and it is more palatable to the child. So, so uh, like uh, that, uh, there like if it is a uh, IV dose, we will give like uh, in uh, adults, it will be 200. Uh, then uh, children, uh, it will be like for uh, more than 12 years, uh, 100. Then 6 to 12 years, uh, 50. Uh, and uh, less than uh, 6 years, it will be 25. Okay. Uh, and uh, if it is an oral dose, then the equivalence will come. Equivalence you so need if, to calculate. Uh, like pretnison for adults, it is pretnison. If it is pretnison, it is 40 to 60 mg OD or 20 One to 30 mg. 1 milligram per kilogram uh, body weight. Uh, and uh, 10 mg of pretnison will be equivalent to 1.5 mg of dexa. dexa. So like that we will have we to calculate. We need to calculate. Fine. Uh, and uh, other thing is uh, uh, like H1 receptor blockers and the H2 receptor blockers. H1 receptor blockers like uh, chlorfenramine malate, diphenhydramine can be given. So, we have in India available chlorfenramine malate. So, that also we can give it like 50, uh, for adults it is 50 mg. For children it will be uh, uh, more than 12 years it will be like, uh, 25. Uh, then uh, it will be like... Uh, 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 chlorofendramine will be 10, 10 5, 5, 5, 5, 2.5 and 0.25 uh, or 250 microgram. Uh, diphenhydramine will be 50. 50. So, diphenhydramine we don't use, but we use chlorofendramine malleate. Uh, then other thing is the H2 blocker. H2 blockers will be rantidin and cimetidin. Uh, preferably, we go for rantidin. With, uh, with cimetidin, there are chance for some arrhythmias and drug interactions are all there. Cimetidin is not available very in India also. also. So, we go for Rantred and IV, we can give 50 mg. 50 mg, IV, IV step. Uh, the, any investigations that you want to do for a patient with anaphylaxis? Uh, uh, the, uh, like, uh, from ED setup, ideally, like no investigation because it's a clinical diagnosis. Uh, but there are like investigations like the serum histamine level and serum tryptase level. But these two uh, may not be always sensitive because histamine uh, will be elevated only in 5 to 30 minutes of the reaction. So, by the time patient present to ED and we give all these things, uh, it might have settled down. Other thing is the serum uh, tryptase level. That too may be like normal in many patients. So, it is also not very sensitive test. Other thing we have to look for is whether it is a simple anaphylaxis or it is a angioedema, hereditary angioedema. angioedema. So, that is because of a C3 uh, like, uh, deficiency. deficiency. So, uh, so, so the, the group management will be hereditary angioedema, that management will be totally different. You need to go for either uh, the FFP, uh, like in our setup, we will be going for a FFP, uh, but uh, other uh, bradykin uh, antagonists can all uh, be also available. Be concentrate also uh, can be uh, recombinant concentrate, concentrate or or is also available so hereditary angioedema is shortly different there will not be any major trigger uh -huh. uh, for that suddenly the patient is come with the history of angioedema and when you go back there is previous history similar episodes multiple episodes Episode. in the past and uh, they, will they respond to the normal anaphylaxis no. management? Uh, no, no it, it may not be responding to epinephrine. Also. So, that is the clue that you will get when you the patient is not responding uh, to your normal anaphylaxis management but there is no harm in giving uh -huh. uh, because we doesn't know whether it's a hereditary angioma or anaphylaxis so there is no harm but uh, the definitive treatment will be the protein concentrate or your FFP, FFP. what is available in India. and. Uh, the key aspects in, will be in the airway management. So, as an ED physician, our challenges will be the airway management here. So, uh, whether uh, to go ahead and intubate early or whether need to wait and watch any uh, role for adrenaline nebulizations? What, uh, what is the present status? Uh, if the patient is uh, in uh, like going into a, a laryngeal edema, any uh, hoarseness of voice, anything is there, we have to anticipate patient will uh, require a, a, a intubation. So, in that, uh, in such a condition where upper airway involvement is significant, ideally we have to go for early intubation because mm -hmm. uh, patient will go to into laryngeal spasm. Okay. And adrenaline nebulizations can uh, be given. Uh, when you uh, see, look into the guidelines, none of these guidelines are recommending for an adrenaline nebulization, but in our effect. practice, definitely it is found to be effective. 
so uh, in general practice it's it found is to be a, a, a im adrenal is a drug im or iv but uh, local effects of similarly adrenal what you can do you can dilute like just like salbutamol you can take 0.3 ml and you can dilute <laughs> into 3 ml of normosilin and you give it as an embolization so we have been trying it and we have been finding it useful but none of these guidelines recommend for that so that is one practice that we 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 can try uh, but again as you said intubation is again going to be a risky thing uh because again laryngeal edema you need to select the smaller size okay. of ut2 and maybe a surgical airway might be needed because they can just come in cardiac arrest so they can come just come in cardiac arrest and uh, you will not be intubate or able to ventilate the patient so surgical airway is one uh, thing that you need to uh, consider and uh, immediately needle crick or uh, you have to surgical uh, uh, cricothyrotomy also you need to consider oh, that is one thing and again in anaphylaxis one advantage is that if you are doing a surgical airway uh we had a patient previously we, when we just went ahead with a needle crick initially and uh, and we started doing a jet ventilation and meanwhile uh, we were doing laryngoscopy also to see whether we are able to intubate uh, after administering the initial adrenaline and all those drugs the edema significantly subsided so later we we we, we used to get intubated him so that is one thing so uh, like usually in surgical airway you need to convert that Uh, surgical airway into a permanent one or a temporary one uh, till the primary issue is solved but here is one condition maybe after you giving your adrenaline the edema can subside and go ahead and intubate the patient also so that that one experience that what we had a uh, couple of years back so that is one thing again uh, routinely the ch- uh, basic differentiation is just the patient is having a just arterial lesion maybe we can just treat with the antihistamines and uh, steroids. steroids that will be sufficient and maybe a local steroids also maybe you can ask them to apply some beta methasone locally maybe it is following a small insect bite they will having only local effect they can be well cured with that but definitely keep and watch of this patient for next 3 to 4 hours better to keep them in the ed if they don't develop any of the further airway episode then they, they can be discharged home uh, uh, what about anaphylaxis uh, anaphyl- uh, then uh, what uh, one other point to be like mentioned was uh, in decontamination part if it is secondary to some insect bites or something mm. uh, like uh, we have to remove that sting yes. that is one thing we have uh, so otherwise it, the episodes will, will start coming delayed this uh, so. thing will be there and uh, other thing is uh, usually the biphasic reaction after some time uh, is rare but it can happen so if the patient we had to give if it is an anaphylaxis and we had given adrenaline uh, then we can observe the patient at least for like 6 hours and uh, Uh, ideally uh, like the patient should be uh, admitted because they can uh, have a uh, it's always better to keep them at least for 24 hours and before discharging them minimum 6 hours uh, you need to recommend them need to stay back Ad- but if they are not agreeing minimum 6 hours you need to observe and again hypotension and all those definitely they need to be admitted, admitted. Uh, so that is one thing and which are the common agents that uh, we see in our ed uh, for to have anaphylaxis uh, one thing is drugs uh, drugs it is like nsaids uh, then uh, it can be like some uh, antibiotics penicillins all these ca- uh, present then other thing is like food food it is uh, the shellfish uh, uh, and all the seafoods then peanuts uh, then some patients can have like soya proteins milk all these things allergy uh then uh it can be insect bite uh then uh, anaphylaxis like pollen and all is rare it is usually a allergic reaction but it can also uh, manifest as uh, anaphylaxis then certain uh, like uh, iv contrast like in hospital setup okay. radiological so, contrast uh, which induction agent you will avoid for a patient who is have got soybean allergy or an egg protein allergy uh, proper fall should be avoided proper fall should be avoided that is one history related to resuscitation where they can have allergy so that is proper fall uh, that vehicle is uh, made of uh, this protein. protein so they that should be avoided uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, this patient, we went through the secondary examination and uh, sec- uh, sample history. So patient has no previous history of any allergies, uh, not uh, no uh, medical or surgical history, and uh, like uh, the patient had never any episode, a similar episode in the past. So today, uh, she was uh, having a food uh, like post her duty, and then uh, sad uh, like she had some uh, seafood. Uh, with the uh, food and uh, around like 10 to 15 minutes uh, after her food and she had one episode of diarrhea and then she started to have the urticaria lesions all over the body and face and also associated with some respiratory okay. distress so uh, uh, she was taken to so the so it's a ED. classical anaphylaxis the background history also suggesting that so always uh, uh, we will not get this classical history because once the patient is been comatose or unresponsive one differential diagnosis that we need to keep in our mind is anaphylaxis so young patient otherwise normal suddenly brought in uh, then 
we might not get this history because the patient only knows about the history. So always remember anaphylaxis as a differential diagnosis for an unexplained uh, collapse. Okay. So always keep that in mind. Uh, whenever we get a lot of patients suddenly collapsing and we doesn't know the reason why they have collapsed. When we go ahead and go back and uh, see the uh, case sheet, we doesn't get any reason for it when we audit that. But maybe due to anaphylaxis. In cardiac arrest, we will give adrenaline. After that, they revive. Once they revive, only we will get the history. So again, uh, this lady was alone and she has consumed some food item. If she was brought unresponsive, we will definitely would have missed an anaphylaxis. So always keep as a background differential diagnosis. Okay, so the key, uh, can you just summarize the management of anaphylaxis? So uh, basically, uh, anaphylaxis, it is uh, again A, B, C, D approach itself. Uh, here, like airway has a lot of significance. Early airway intervention, if required, uh, should be uh, gone for. Then, uh, breathing part, uh, like uh, supplemental oxygenation, we will have to give. Uh, some, and if the patient has persistent weeds, we ha will have to start on nebulizations. We can give adrenal nebulization or we can go for uh, like salbutamol. Uh, or ipratropium nebulizations. Then circulation part, uh, like uh, again, hypotension, hypotension uh, uh, like any shock, we can give fluid bottles of 20 to 30 ml per kg and uh, followed by, like if not improving, uh, an, uh, like infusion of epinephrine. Definitely adrenaline should be given without uh, any doubt because uh, anaphylactic shock. The, and, uh, the it, is not like a, it is not as a vasopressor mm. because it is the treatment of choice. Uh, for a septic shock, we will have a refractory septic shock, then we will start uh, uh, steroids like that. It is not refractory. This is a drug of choice. Here it is. Uh, uh, adrenaline. adrenaline. So, we need to give that. Uh, then, uh, like, uh, other thing is, uh, in uh, disability part, again, uh, if the patient will be having sometimes low sensorium, secondary to hypoperfusion or hypoxia, so whatever it is, we will have we to address to that. Then exposure part, as already told, uh, and sometimes it will be some, uh, like, we will have to go for decontamination. Sometimes some uh, allergen may be on the dress or something that will be causing the anaphylaxis, local irritant or something. So, uh, if it is that, we will have to go for a decontamination. Decontamination. Uh, and the other thing, how what is your take on this allergic test? Uh, allergic test, like it is not an emergency thing. Uh, it can be like... Uh, but the only thing is that we will be discharging this patient with an antihistamine. So, if the patient wants to get an Later. allergic test done, it should not be done immediately. And there is no role for the skin prick test and all. The, uh, maybe blood test if they insist only. Uh, unless and until here there is a trigger. We are understanding the trigger. But in certain conditions, they have good recurrent anaphylaxis. They are not getting any trigger. Only those group of patients... Uh, we will be recommending, but uh, majority of the patient, they demand for a blood allergic test, test for the allergic test, then uh, that is the role. Uh, generally, in an emergency situation, there is no role uh, for this allergic test. Okay. Uh, and uh, other thing is, while uh, discharging the patient also, we will have to counsel the patient and the bystanders regarding this. And uh, like uh, like some uh, in rec uh, anaphylaxis, like EpiPens are all available. available. So, we will have to uh, prime them regarding this. It is very this, costly. Yeah. Indian, a normal Indian can't afford an EpiPen. It is nearing 15,000 rupees so for a 1.3 mg shot. So, if it is like severe recurrent anaphylaxis patients and all can uh, like have that. And other thing is uh, regarding the trigger. Uh, so, uh, uh, abstain from taking the food items and all. Uh, like The key thing in anaphylaxis is avoid that allergen. So, whatever be the allergen has triggered them. So, they need to avoid it. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, bystanders also should be like uh, made aware of the uh, situation because uh, like uh, and in uh, outside and all there are like uh, bracelets and all uh, stating this. So like that. Uh, we can also also, also be... the medication history. We should be clearly uh, the patient is our follow up patient. We can uh, put it in our as an alert. Like this patient is having got allergy to this drug or this agent. Uh, and uh, on discharge, we can discharge a patient maybe uh, antihistamines for 3 to 5 days and steroids or Maybe short steroid, post steroid for uh, 3 to 3 4 to days. 3 to 5 days, uh, dexamethasone okay. can be orally given. Okay. Or vice long, whichever you prefer. Fine. Okay. Thank you.